Film is one of the only mediums of art that can affect a person in such a way that it gives them a lasting feeling or mood. These moods are created within films through things like plots and themes, but they're also created in more subtle ways too, using normal characteristics of a film such as sound design or the film's color or even the film's lighting strategically in a way that affects a viewer's emotions without them even realizing it. We use genre to attempt to organize our films by their themes and the emotions and moods they make us feel. Most films in genres such as horror have the same types of themes, colors, sounds, and lighting to achieve a mood, but every once in a while you'll find a film that refuses to be categorized. A film that falls into a single genre on the surface level but underneath struggles with its genre identity in many ways. The film I'm talking about is Midsommar. Midsommar is considered to be a horror film because of its macabre subject matter in scenes like this. And this. No! And because of its whole cult community thing. But almost every other aesthetic and characteristic of the film are the complete opposite of horror. Since the genre of horror is so broad, I'm going to categorize Midsommar in a small subgenre that I'm calling contemporary cult horror, which I believe is the easiest way to describe this hybrid type of horror, and I'm going to compare it to others within this subgenre. Contemporary cult horror is often synonymous with very dim lighting and lowly saturated hues. In films like Hereditary and Rosemary's Baby, almost every scene is shot in a very dark interior with bland, dull colors. In the name of the burned and the tortured, hail Adrian! Hail Satan! Hail Satan! Hail Paymon! Okay, maybe they have more in common than I thought. They also have very intense and unnerving scores. Here's a quick taste. While other cult horror films like Children of the Corn and Wicker Man take place mostly during daylight, a lot of scenes are shot within dimly lit buildings, or in Children of the Corn's case, within the fields of corn, which intentionally feel claustrophobic. And while Wicker Man has its fair share of colors, almost none of them are truly saturated. They're faded colors to match the grim tone of the film. Unlike the aesthetics of these films, which are all fairly similar, Midsommar is very bright, colorful, and pleasing to listen to. Well, excluding the first 20 minutes. The first 20 minutes of the film is actually a traditional horror film, aesthetically speaking. Scenes like this are lit in such a way in order to shroud the character in darkness. See, the reason this film is horrific in the first 20 minutes, but something completely different afterwards, is that the film is framed from the perspective of Danny. In the beginning, Danny loses her entire family and becomes trapped in this toxic relationship, so it makes sense that we get scenes like this and this. Do you see how dark this place is? I mean, Jesus Christ, this is a diner. It's absurdly too dark, simply to match the mood they're going for. They're trying to put you in the dark, sad, doomed perspective of Danny. Characters wear and are surrounded by neutral, lowly, saturated hues. They're lit in ways that keep them in darkness, even though it seems strange given the location of the scene, such as when they're in a diner or even an airplane. And the sounds. <laughs> Just damn. But as soon as those 20 minutes are up and Danny and friends are going to Sweden to stay with this community, colors become a bit brighter and more saturated and they're shown in brighter light. And then as soon as the group arrives, they literally walk out of the darkness of the woods and into the light of this, well, paradise. At least from Danny's perspective. I mean, listen to this music.
After that, everything that happens within the confines of this community is shown in extremely bright light and the frames are usually littered with highly saturated hues, excluding a dream sequence and only a small murder. The plot excuses the film of having any night scenes within the community when they explain that it only gets this dark in this part of Sweden. During the group's stay in the community, horrific things happen, but these things are always shown in bright sunlight, surrounded by beautiful colors because the film is from Danny's perspective. Even some of the most brutally disgusting scenes have a lot of light and color to them. Even in these horrific circumstances, Danny finds a place to call home. You can see how they accept her when she participates in the dance ritual and wins her spot as May Queen. She is the only character enjoying herself, and because of that, she is covered in these beautifully vibrant flowers that begin to act as their own character as they breathe and move during Danny's drug trip. After performing a ritual in the mountains, her transformation is punctuated by her May Queen dress. I don't even know how to describe this thing. I mean, just look at it. It's beautiful. All these scenes look and even sound amazing. Even the scene where the cult essentially rapes Danny's boyfriend while he's drugged is shown with an angelic score. This film stands out so much because of the stark contrast between its subject matter and its aesthetic. It's intelligent in the way it shows character development and bold with how it shows what would be a hell for many of us, becoming a beautiful safe haven for a few. Midsommar deserves awards for its beautiful aesthetics, its amazing acting, and its terrifyingly accurate depiction of something we can all relate to, a toxic relationship. The industry needs more filmmakers like Ari Aster and more films like this. 